give a big thank you to our buddy Shane Rowland that's watching this video. Uh, he's one of the largest contributors of um, artwork for our, let me see here. Yeah, there we go, right there. One of the largest contributors uh, for our Baja build. Um, so a big thank you goes out to Shane Rowland. Um, actually a big thank you goes out to everybody that, uh, has supported my friend Pete through good times and hard times. Yesterday we had a situation that was very bad. Um, I guess I can go ahead and tell you about it. I purchased 13 Lombardi poplar trees and I planted them on Thursday, I believe. Thursday afternoon we planted them. And on Saturday morning, um, of course, it was in the set upper 70s when we planted them. On Saturday morning, um, it took a, the weather took an extreme turn. And we had a massive windstorm. It started out as a massive uh, windstorm. Now, remember, these are trees that haven't even been in the ground 48 hours. Uh, so, uh, we planted all these trees. It took us all fucking day to do it. Um, the trees cost us, uh, 1500 bucks for 13 trees. They went ahead and planted them. <clears throat> and then, like I said, on Saturday, uh, the weather took a turn for the worst. It started out with a extreme windstorm. And then from there, it turned into a, a, a monsoon rainstorm. And then yesterday, now this is all within a 24 hour period. So by Saturday night, uh, it was extreme Amazon rainstorm all night long, completely flooded my property out. Um, the drainage out here fucking sucks. Um, so anyway, yesterday by 12 o'clock, it was, um, snow blizzard. So me and Minnie went out there and, um, undug, we dug all the trees up, all 13 of them. I had to go down by 13 five gallon buckets. We dug all 13 trees out of the ground in the blizzard snow <clears throat> and we brought them in my shop over here they were waterlogged all the leaves uh i wouldn't say all of them but i'd say 90 percent of all the leaves turned brown with black spots <clears throat> a lot of them are dead so i got them sitting outside here on the patio now because i mean if you look outside wow the sun's shining beautiful there's not a cloud in the sky now and it's going to be a beautiful day so why did all this happen to me? That's what I'm asking, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and ask a question, why me? Um, the weather's been awesome for the last several months. I get these trees, I plant them, and then all of a sudden, bam, uh, the weather decides to turn bad and almost kill all my trees. 13 trees to be exact. We actually ordered 23 trees. We canceled the order on the other 10, and when they get here, we're gonna refuse uh, shipment of them when they get back they're gonna give us a full refund so uh, this video was supposed to be filmed yesterday people let's get back over here uh, once again I want to thank everybody that's supporting me on building this car right here um, and we've done a lot of work to it I'm not gonna go over over it what we've already done but uh, if you want to support my friend Pete, I have a bunch of artwork for sale. Contact me or many 972-420-1293. Um, and we can go over the situation. Any artwork that I sell, uh, and I've already sold a bunch of it, goes directly into this vehicle. Um, I'm in the process of getting the stickers made with all the names of the people that has um, contributed. Uh, but out here being in Moab, Utah, where I'm at, it takes a long time to get shit done. So we're going to get that done, but it ain't done yet. Let's get to the lesson of today. 
Now that we learned our lesson not to plant trees um, in our yard, if you have bad luck, because the bad luck will fucking hit you, and we already learned that lesson, let's move down the line. I've actually been up since um, I've actually been up since uh, twelve thirty last night. Uh, I haven't slept since. I went to bed at nine o'clock. I woke up at twelve thirty. Uh, and all I've been thinking about is these fucking trees. Uh, you know, the, 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 the place where I bought them, their, their attitude is, well, let them die. It doesn't matter. You got a guaranteed warranty. Um, if your trees die, you get free ones. I don't want the little bastards to die. Okay. I want to try to save them and keep them alive. Let's move down the line. We talked enough about trees and Volkswagens. Let's get to work here. I got a lot of work to do and let me explain what we're working on. What we got here is our uh, rust gang. Every time I turn the corner on it, um, I'm finding something else wrong with it. Um, I've actually done the overall major body work and I am now in the process uh, and I've already hung the panels, the final fitment. And what the final fitment is, is when you, after you do all your body work and you're ready to put it in, um, paintable primer, your final primer, you want to fit all your bolt-on body panels. You want to do that, and you want to do that properly, just like as if you were done with the car. And the reason is, is because our final block job on our bodywork, and you can see right in here where I had to do some bodywork right here. So I'm going around the car, I'm doing the bodywork, and I'm block sanding it, and getting it into the final prime job. That's the main uh, course that's going on. But before we do that, we got these things here. These are called fender extensions, quarter panel extensions, whatever you want to call them. These are on the car. Now, a lot of classic cars have these. A lot of General Motors, uh, a lot of uh, Mopars, a lot of Ford products, and foreign cars have this type of situation. Um, and what this is, this is called a quarter panel extension, fender extension. Let's walk up to the front. I'm going to show you what they got on the front. And I'm still getting over my knee surgery and getting ready to have another knee surgery. So I've got to get this done. And in paint primer, I want to get the dash painted on it. So after I'm semi healed up, I can start working back on it and do something to it. So if we look up here on the front fender, <clears throat> I left these on here on purpose because I had to do the body work and I wanted to make sure that all of the body lines on this action right here lined up. Now I will be removing these, but in the process I left them on there um, and did the body work around them. So when I remove them, they'll have a nice super crisp line. I'll be able to sand that down and then put them back on here and everything will line up perfect. So these are called the headlight buckets, which are basically extensions of the fender. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is fucked up. So we're gonna keep going. Um, so we'll take these off when we paint it and clean them up. But I did all the body work around these to make sure and ensure that they were lined up perfect. So that's the front extension. And then if we come back here, this is our rear extension right there. I'm sorry, I had to go get a drink of water. My throat was very fucking dry. Like I said, I've been up since, um, yeah, 12.30 uh, last night. I haven't slept all fucking night. Okay, so what we're gonna do, let me get my camera set up here. And I think that'll work right there. We don't care about my ugly face. Let's just concentrate on working. 
if you look on this edge right here, you can see how it sticks out from the quarter panel. Now, these are brand new quarter panels. These are not factory quarter panels. These are full quarter panels that I replaced on the car. So what I did first is I went ahead and took my fender extension. After I replaced the quarter panel, I took the fender extension and I lined it up the best I could. Now, where we want to line it up, the main place where we want to line it up is right here. This is our main lineup point. We want to line it up with this right here. And then as we flow around, then we want to get it all lined up the best we can everywhere else. But we want to make sure that this lineup is going to be our main start lineup. And the reason I say that is because we want our, and I don't want to close this all the way, um, we want our body line to be even all the way down. So when you're doing this type of body work or fitment, you always start at the uh, body line of the panel, where the panel meets the other panel. And I'd like to go ahead and say something about these bullshit hinges. Um, these are Dynacorn. These are Dynacorn hinges, and they suck. Okay, the spring inside them is not strong. They're very weak, um, and they will not hold the deck lid up. They will not hold the deck lid up, as you can see. Okay, so get to the market, and you want to buy some uh, brand new hinges for your beautiful Mustang Fastback. Stay the fuck away from Dynacorn. Dynacorn sucks. Now you know. Uh, we're going to have a lot of camera movement going on in this video because I want to make sure that you see everything that I'm doing properly. So we got a extension here now remember we lined it up right here this is where we start then we come around here so it looks really nice in this area right here but when we get over here lining up a oem factory part with our aftermarket cord it doesn't line up right there's a, a big gap here let me see if you can see that from this angle and you can see how this sticks out this is sticking out away from the quarter panel so what we got to do is we got to do some minor body work to that. And we have to go ahead and use Bondo. You're right. I said Bondo. We're going to have to use some Bondo to feather all this out. Now, how much Bondo are we going to use? Not a lot. All right. This is not going to be a Bondo buggy. All right. And for all you millennial cocksuckers out there, if you think this is old school and, and you think that I'm some old piece of shit and I don't know what I'm doing, fuck off, okay? That's all I can say. That's all I can say because it seems like the millennial crowd that is doing paint and body work has never done this type of work. All they know how to do is, is go buy a brand new aftermarket fender and bolt it on and paint it. They've never done extreme restoration jobs. So if you're one of those guys, Please don't leave a comment that says, oh, this guy's old school and rah, 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 because you don't fucking know anyway, asshole. Now that I did that rant, we'll go ahead and get on with the fucking job. So now that we have fit this on here, now that we have fit this on here, and I, I want to let everybody know I got a TikTok account. Uh, just look up DIY Auto School on TikTok. It's not really anything. It's just advertising this YouTube channel. It's got little short videos on it. Um, but I'll tell you something about TikTok. If you get on there, cuss and holler, like I'm doing now, they will ban you from there because they, they claim that you are threatening people. You are a threatening person. The, the world we live in now, it, it fucking sucks. Okay, And that's why I don't like doing live videos because I start ranting and raving for no reason. But yeah. What a shithole fucking world we're living in. You can't even speak your mind to a person or you can't even talk in your own lingo without the, the, the what can we say, the organization, the corporation telling you how to do it. Total bullshit. Okay, so now that we got this lined up in this area and we know it's screwed up right here, 
we need to remove that. Now, the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to use um, a 3H driver handle with a 716 socket. Your piece might be different. Your piece might be different. I don't know. It might not have 716. It might be 3 8 It might be half inch. You might have seven bolts on here instead of four. Okay? So don't take it for granted that you're going to use this tool and you pull it out of your box and say, well, that guy lied to me. That's not the tool I need. Please don't do that because that's what a lot of people do. I'm going to reach inside here like you see me doing, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the speed nuts that are holding this on. Now, I only have two on here, okay? I only have two going, and it actually consists of four. There's, all, there's four, so I have one in this lower corner, and then I have one up here. <clears throat> now, when you're working on something like this, being pot metal, you don't want to use um, air tools. You only want to use hand tools on that because this is not metal. This is pot metal. This is a casting that was made. And, and you can't use heat on this either. Keep the heat away. It will melt it like solder. Okay? Pot metal is very, very precious. And one more thing I want to say is they actually sell these aftermarket. You can buy these aftermarket. But I'm going to be honest with you right now, they suck. All right, so if you have the original um, quarter panel extensions or possibly the original headlight buckets and you're working on a car like this or possibly an old muscle car that, that requires these, do not think that you're going to go buy brand new ones to make it better. What I am doing right here, what I am showing you is what you should do. All right? Buying an aftermarket part to bolt onto another aftermarket is not going to work. It's going to make things worse. So please follow my lead here, people. I just took it off. Do you see that? Look what I did. Can you follow that action? Now I want to turn it around. I want to show you something. On this particular extension, it takes a gasket. See that gap right there? There is a rubber gasket that goes in here, a rubber seal. Very important that you know this because what we're about to do right now might be old school. All right? Might be old time, old man shit that I'm going to show you. So pay attention. I got my two inch tape. Do you see that? Putting it down here. I'm going to take the camera. There we go. Look at there. Okay? So what I'm going to do to ensure that I don't Ruin these gaps by what we're about to do. I am going to put tape. Do you see that? Looky here. I'm going to take some tape and I am going to cover these up just like this. Look what's going on, guys. Follow me here, please. So I got that gap covered. There's a reason for that. Pay attention. I'm doing this for free. I'm not charging you. It's free lesson Monday today. Just like every day over at DIY Wild School. It's always free. You don't have to pay to learn. That's how the whole world should be, but it's not. So I covered this gap just like this. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around. And we're going to go ahead and put some more tape on the outside just like this. Now, the reason I'm putting tape on this is because the Bondo will not stick to the tape. And if I don't put tape on it, it is going to make a big mess on our, what is this called? Pot metal. And if we take grinders and sanders to our, you got it, pot metal, it might ruin it if you don't know what you're doing. Remember that. So we're going to go ahead and cover this edge. And now what I've done <clears throat> is I've covered my edge up. I went ahead and covered my gap where our rubber seal goes. And we are now ready to put this back on the car. You heard me right. I'm going to put it back on the car. 
And you're looking at me going, why? Why are you putting it back on the car? It's got a gap. I'm going to show you why. Hang on. Hang tight. Okay? Relax. Don't get all nervous. Let's go ahead and move the camera up here. As we move the piece up, did you see how I did that? Let's do that again. Okay? <clears throat> We're going to move the camera up. As I move it up, do you see that? That's how it should be done. That's the right way to do that. All right? Let's get in focus here. Let's. There we go. That's what we want. Right there. We're going to take our piece just like this. We're going to go ahead and put it back on the vehicle, lining it up the exact way that it was before. Remember that. We're going to start here, line it up here. And then I'm going to take my speed nut, and I'm going to put the top one in first. I'm sorry that I can't bring the camera over here for you to see this, but trust me, I'm doing it the right way. We're not jerry-rigging it. We're not, we're not forcing it. We're not welding it. We're not doing anything but doing it right. Here's the other one. Like I said, I'm only putting two on here, and I'm going to put that one down on the bottom. If I can get it started, there we go. Okay. Now, before I tighten this up, I want to make sure that it's lined up. And where I'm going to line it up is right here on the top. I want to get that lined up the best I can. Did I tell you about this tool here? Very important. Don't use air tools. Air tools are the no-no tool on this job. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, I'm old school. I use air tools. I don't use a. I don't use battery powered tools. I forgot about that. Nobody buys air tools anymore. Everybody uses battery powered bullshit. Air tools are out. Sorry, I said that. Yeah, only old people use air tools, guys. Only old people. I mean, what do they got now? They got they got electric air ratchets. They got electric impacts. They, they got electric screwdrivers. They got electric um, drills. Uh, I mean, you know, why even do anything? I mean, if you think about it, why even use your hands? You know, pretty soon we're going to be living in Terminator days. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator. Everything's going to be fucking, uh, the robots are going to take over. And uh, we're going to be one scummy-ass lazy society. So... Anyway, now that we talked about that and I ran it about that, let's get on with the job. Does that look nice, people? Can I get a thumbs up on that? Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. I taped it off really awesome, and it looks great. But you know what's even more greater? Is that we're going to go over to the Bondo table now, and we're going to go ahead and mix up our, our, our magic mystery Bondo that my friend Pete mixes up himself and saves hundreds of dollars doing it. There's people out there buying a gallon of Bondo for $100 plus. There's people out there spending $45, $50 a gallon of Bondo because they think it's the best stuff in the world. I'm going to show you a secret. My friend Pete's going to do that for free. I'm not going to charge you. Only if you pay attention, you will fucking learn. Let's get to the Bondo table and see what we're going to learn today over there in my neighborhood, in my world that we call DIY Auto School. I'm sorry, I'm moving slow. My fucking knee hurts. Did I tell you that we might have some camera action here moving around? This is live, okay? Keep up with it. Look what we got. <clears throat> we got our Bondo table. Nice, beautiful Bondo table. Consists of a lot of stuff. Consists of uh, a piece of cardboard that I use for a Bondo pallet. I got many different sizes of uh, spreaders. <clears throat> but the one that we're concerned about is this one right here. That's right, people, an old, used, abused Bondo spreader. Ain't that a shame? Ain't that a shame that this guy showing you how to do this is using this? 
He's using this. I might be doing it wrong. I don't know. We'll wait and see what the comments say. So I'm taking this tool, which I've had for many, many years, and I'm cleaning off my Bondo spreader. Do you see me doing that? Look how nice that comes out. <clears throat> We're done. That's it. It's clean. Um, one more thing that I do. Let me go up here. Do you see that piece of sandpaper on the wall? That's to clean the edge. That's my sharpener, my Bondo spreader sharpener. Watch. Wow, look at that. Do you see how I sharpen that? That's my sharpener. Maybe I should sell these. I wonder how much I can get for a Bondo sharpener. Huh. And it even hangs on the wall. Damn, I might go Ronco with that. I'm sorry, I said Ronco. Anybody out there know who Ronco is? Hell, you might be an old bastard like me. You don't know until you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll put these up for sale. How many people will buy a Bondo sharpener from me? There we go. Okay, it's ready. So, back to the lesson at hand. Now, I want everybody to pay attention here because, you know, this is old school. We don't want to talk new school and, you know, pay, and, and people go out there and pay $150 for a gallon of bottle. I'm going to show you old school, and I'm going to show you what really works because the corporation is screwing you, and you don't know it. So we got our $18 gallon of Bondo here, okay? It's not a fancy can. It, uh, it isn't multicolored, uh, custom-painted can with bright letters all over it and big fancy words. It's a gallon of Bondo, people. Let's open that Bondo up. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's my Bondo, Bondo uh, stick or scooper. That's a scooper. So we're going to open up our... $18 gallon of Bondo. We're going to dig down in there. And watch what I do. Watch this. Wow. Did you see that? Did you see that? Son of a bitch. It came out of the can just like the $150 bullshit. The trick is this stuff here, people. Do you see that? That's called plastic honey. Get a screenshot of it. You're going to need it. You're gonna take some of this, you're gonna go like this, watch. Look at that. Wow, did you see that? We're gonna pour a little bit of that on there. We're not done, because what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take my hardener. And guess what, people? This hardener is the same hardener you get with your $150 gallon of Bondo. Same shit. I'm gonna go ahead and squirt that on there. It's a little bit cold out. We're gonna use a little bit more hardener than normal. The colder it is, the more hardener you use. It's common sense, guy. Now I'm gonna take my Bondo spreader that I've cleaned off and sharpened with my Bondo spreader sharpener. Very important to have one of those. And we're gonna mix our Bondo up. Now what this does by doing what I'm doing, I have just created a pallet of $150 Bondo. That's what I've just done. I have taken this product and this product, mixed it together, and have created my own $150 gallon of Bondo that you are buying and wasting your money on. Now, if it's cold out, once again, add more hardener. Very important. If it's real hot, you use less hardener. There's no rocket science to it. Don't read the instructions on here because they're going to tell you three drops of this and four drops of that. Fuck that. All right? Learn how to mix the shit and do it right. Just like that. Looky there. Wow. Let's get back over to the car. Let's get some work done, people. Let's do that. How does that sound? Okay, so without moving the camera... I'm going to go ahead and take my custom mix, okay, custom mix Bondo that I just mixed up. Look at that. Look how nice and creamy that is. Look, watch. Let me show you again. Can you see that? Beautiful. 
That's called money, people. That's money. You know why? I saved a shitload of fucking money doing that. That's money in my pocket. Watch how this flows out. We're going to take that and we're going to go like this. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to push real hard. The reason we're pushing real hard, we're going to fill that gap up. Okay, I'm going to come across the top here. I'm going to do the same thing. Pushing real hard. Did you see how I did that? I pushed it in there. Just like I was cocking it with a cocking gun. I'm going to push it again one more time. Now that we did that, we're going to go ahead and final finesse it. I'm going to take my beautiful $150 Bondo mix. I'm going to bring it up here like this. Now what I'm doing, I'm doing it nice and clean. Look at this, guys. Watch. Nice and clean. I'm feathering it out. I'm filling it in. And I'm leveling. That's what this is all about. It's about leveling Leveling it out, leveling it out, just like this. I'm leveling, leveling it out and getting it to where it all matches up perfect. Did I tell you about the tape? Tape is very important on a job like this. So please use your tape, very important. I'm going to have to come over here because I can't see it right. I'm doing it from the wrong angle, guys. There we go. Now we can see what's going on. See? So I'm going to go like that. Now, I'm going to let you know that I'll have to do this. I'll probably have to put two to three coats on this to make it work proper. Let me clean that out. We don't want any mess down in here. And by the looks of it, I might have added too much honey. I, I, I might have added on this first coat here, I might have added way too much honey, but that's okay. Honey's good. Honey's good. It'll all work out. Okay, so this is just our filler coat. This is not our finished coat. All right? And that's how you want to do it, just like that. Does it look professional yet, people? Are we doing it right? Or are we doing it, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I was using the wrong word. I was using old school. The correct word that I should be using is hack. Hack job, that's right. I get more comments of people, and of course it's these millennial piece of shits that, that think they're smarter than you. Look, look at this guy's a hack. He's a hack, look at it. he's hacking it. He's a hack. I get, I get more comments of that than anything else. Okay, so I'm going to take my Bondo spreader, and this is kind of an old one. I shouldn't be using this really, to be honest with you. I should have got a newer one. But uh, I'm, going to, I'm just going to go ahead and do this, and I'm going to continue to do that until I notice that our delicious and wonderful Bondo mix that we've just mixed up is drying. So now it is drying and what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you, I actually have it set up over here, but we're going to, this is drying pretty quickly. I didn't think it was going to dry that quick, but it is. Um, let's go ahead and see how dry it's getting. Okay, it's a little, it's still a little tacky, so We'll go ahead and wait a few minutes on that. Let's go ahead and move over to the other one because I already prepped the other one up so we can go ahead and move down the line. Um, it's going to take approximately 30 minutes for this to dry thoroughly. You really don't want to sand this. You don't want to touch it for at least 30 minutes. All right? And that's in any weather, not just, you know, the weather that we're working in now. So let's go ahead and transfer to the other side. And if you look behind me, you can see I've already prepped that up and move down the line. Now, I did that because uh, that would speed up the video situation and you wouldn't have to hear me whining and crying and bitching and complaining the whole time. So I figured, you know, let me go ahead and do this and then, you know, then everybody will be more happy that I did that. Hang on one second. You always want to make sure, um, speaking of sure, this is the knee that I just had replaced uh, almost four months ago. 
next month on the 21st. This is the knee I'm getting replaced next. So pray for me, people. Throw a prayer in there, okay? Please. We just had a comment, some guy from France. Thank you. Okay, and thanks for everybody else watching too, not just the guy from France, but yeah. All right, so I'm reaching in here with my tool. Do you see my tool? I'm reaching in here and um, I, I'm trying to find the bolts, okay? We got Air Grabber, straight, Strange Round, um, Versatech. We got Versatech, how you doing, buddy? So we got a lot of people that's been watching, uh, yeah. Four months, that's right, my poor nut, you got it. Time flies when you're getting old and you're a hack, you know? Okay, the nut just came off on it. Okay, hold on. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, my main objective right now in life, let me go ahead and explain something to everybody. My main objective in life right this minute, right fucking now as I'm sitting here, is to get this car out of my shop. I told you there was gonna be uh, camera movement. And to get that one out of my shop right there. That is my main objective in life, okay? I want to get these cars out of my life. These cars have been in my life a very long time, and that's what I'm trying to do, okay? So I got one nut off. Let me get the other one on. Or should I say off? And I'm reaching around. I'm doing a reach around on the car here. Okay, and I got to say, this car's really came out beautiful. Um, this is going to be a top-notch show car when it's all done. And I think the owner's going to love it. So I just unbolted it, but if you notice, I got tape on there. Now watch what I do. I'm going to take my dead blow. All right, this is called a dead blow, people. This isn't called a rubber mallet. This ain't called a mallet. It's a dead blow because the head of this is full of sand. It's a dead blow, trust me, okay? We're going to take the small dead blow. We're just going to tap on it like this. So we're going to tap it away and look what's going on guys. Look at this. Okay. So we're going to tap it a little more and wow, motherfucker. I can't believe it. Look at that. Look at that right there. Came out beautiful, beautiful because I used tape on the edge because I did a hack job. That's hack action right there, sir. Didn't you know that? That's a hack job. Wow. We're not done yet. Can I bring that back at her? I'm going to go ahead and remove all the tape off of this. Let me go ahead and get the camera down here so you can see that. So we're going to remove all the tape. Now, remember, this is another reason we got tape. Looky here, guys. Look at that. Look how clean this is coming out. There ain't no Bondo on our pot metal. Um, we don't have any imperfections going on and our tape protected the situation at hand. Do you see here? So all I got to do is get the tape off and we can move forward. And I also protected our, you got it, our gasket gap. There you go, look at that. Look at there. That's called money. That's called money right there, people. Why is it called money? Because I did a nice clean job. I'm making money for myself and I'm saving money for the owner. Think about it. Now, here we go, watch this. Watch what I do. I'm gonna bring the camera right there, you know why? because I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it right back on there. Just like that. I'm gonna put it right back on there just like that, all right? And I'm gonna tell you why. Because I'm going to go ahead and start block sanding this. I'm gonna go ahead and block that to where I need to block it, and then I'll come back and take it off and probably repeat my process one more time. If you want it done right, follow my friend Pete, okay? Subscribe to my channel. Can you do that? Is that possible that you can actually subscribe? 
I mean, I'm just asking a question. That's all I'm doing. I don't ask for nothing, and I don't expect nothing. There we go, right there. Is that it? That's it, right there. Okay. I don't ask for anything. I don't expect nothing. I'm doing this for you. Do you know when I started doing this, we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have people on the internet showing us how to do all this. We didn't have any of that. All we had was our hands, our brain, and our fuck ups. That's it. And when you fuck up, you start over, you take it off, you do it again. If you fuck it up worse and, and ruin this, then you go out and you find another one and buy it and do it again. And that's what you do when you don't have YouTube, I guess. That's what you do. Kind of like this. Do you see what we got here? I got a block sander. This block sander is probably older than me, believe it or not. But look what happened right here. I got another block sander. I got a lot of block sanders. Now, I hope everybody's sitting down for this, okay? I really do, because this is a situation. Okay. Can I help you, please? <clears throat> huh? They're out in the front getting sun. Okay. All right. Have a nice day, Minnie the Body Shop Girl. What? Have a nice day. You want to say hi to everybody? No. Okay. Okay, Minnie's in a bad mood. Um, probably due to the tree action. Probably the tree action. So, what I did is I put this back on here. You can see that. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this dowel, okay, and I'm going to start sanding. Now, the, paint, the sandpaper that I'm using is 36 grit. This is 36 grit sandpaper. We've got to pay attention here, people. Very important. The reason I'm going to use 36 grit on this action right here, I hope everybody can hear me. I'm checking my battery to make sure my microphone, okay, is because we've got a curve right here. So we don't want to use this, all right? This will not fit in there properly. Very important to have the right tools, by the way. Okay? So, if you don't have one of these, get something similar to it or find something that basically has a half round deal. And then we're going to start sanding. And we're going to get this level like we want it. And we're also going to go ahead and feather that edge out as well. Okay, looky there. Did you see that? Were you paying attention? Good. I did it the hack job way. That's what I did. Now sometimes, speaking of hack, sometimes, and you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I just want to, because you know a lot of people will say that's a hack job. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Um, a lot of times, if you know how to use this, of course, I mean, it is an air tool. Everything's electric these days, you know, battery powered. Um, what you can do, you can take uh, a, an air file, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this one, um, just to show you that it is possible. So we can take the air file on this. Now we can't do it up here because that's rounded, but we can do it right here. Now watch what happens when I use the air file. This is not electric. This is a hack, this is old school hack action using air file. I actually made a TikTok video on um, fixing that quarter, that rocker panel over there, lining it up, and I used my air, uh, air files and I got more comments on there saying it was a hack job and that it was going to be all wavy and sloppy and that I ain't used an air file in 15 years. Gosh. Well, good for you, asshole. Good for you. So we're going to take our air file. And we're 
actually going to use our Bondo as a guide coat. I don't know if you can see that, but you see where it's dark right here and where it's light? So that's why I was saying it's going to take two or three times to do this. So what we got here, it's feathered out really nice here, but right here we still need to put some more filler in it. So now that we went over with our hack file, what I'll do next, let me reach in the trunk here on the shelf. We're going to go ahead and take the hand block, the block sander, and we're just going to final finesse it. But I just wanted to show you that you can use a hack file to do this. You can do that if you want. And that's normally how I do it. I'm only using this because we got, you know, all the professionals out there that, that hasn't used a, a hack file in over 57 years. Okay, that looks really nice. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is basically I'm gonna go ahead and repeat my process, and this video is getting very, very long and boring. Um, but we'll go ahead and proceed to finish this out. If you're up for it, that is. A lot of people, uh, according to my statistics on YouTube, my analytics, um, the average view of my videos is only eight minutes. People only watch my videos for like eight minutes and then they click out. That's what YouTube's telling me. So making these extremely long videos is basically wasting my time according to YouTube. I should only make videos that are between five and eight minutes and be done with it. According to the YouTube analytics that is. That I talk too much. And I, I, I don't show enough. I don't show enough action. I talk too much and, you know, on, on, and on. So we'll go ahead and repeat our process. Let me get that camera down here. So we're going to go ahead and get our tape out if I can get it out. Okay, here we go. And then we're going to go ahead and cover our gap up. Remember, I told you you had to do that. Because <clears throat> this is the hack job. How to hack your way through paint and body work. You know, there's a guy on YouTube. He's called Hacky Sack or Hack Sack or Hack Shop or something like that. And he literally shows you how to hack your way through doing repairs. The real hack way job. He's up on the East Coast somewhere where they get a lot of rust. I know that for a fact. I ain't seen him on YouTube in a long time, though. Um, I know he has a, I think he has a Facebook account. I have seen him on there, but I haven't seen him posting any videos recently. So anybody that knows the hack guy, you know, tell him my friend Pete said, hey, I'm right there with you, bub. Tell him my friend Pete said that. At least he admits doing hack jobs. I try to hide my hack. Because only old school guys like me do hack jobs. You know that. I mean, that's pretty much a fucking given there. All right. So what I got here is basically the same situation. And let's go back up here real quick. Do you see that dark spot right there? That's a low spot, people. That's a low spot. We're using our high-tech Bondo that my friend Pete secretly showed you how to mix. And what I'm doing is I'm finding my, high, my low spots. So this is nice and level right here. I like that. One more thing we're gonna do before we put that on, I forgot to tell you, is on this edge right here, all right, you're gonna be able to see, let me show you that. Let me go ahead and get that because that's kind of important. Uh, there we go. Okay. One thing that's very important, I want you all to take a good look at this lip right here. Um, what we got to do is we got to block sand this lip down and we got to get that nice and smooth all around. That's very important before you bolt it back on. Uh. 
And just to think, my friend Pete almost forgot to show you that hack job. Wow. Well, we really would have fucked up then, wouldn't we? Have? Okay, so I'm going to take my hand block center that's actually older than me. This is probably from, I don't know, probably the early 60s, late 50s. We're going to go ahead, hack sander. We're going to take our hand, hack sander, not hand sander, hack sander. And we're going to lightly sand this, just like that. And I'm only doing it to where everything is white. Remember I told you the dark spot's the low spot? So we're gonna lightly sand this. Just like that. And this isn't the only car that this, I mean, pretty much all classic cars that you're gonna restore, this is pretty much a given of doing it, if you want it done right. Okay, look at that. That's looking nice. But do you kind of get the picture of what's going on here? Do I need to go any further? Um, how many people want to see it finished out? Should we keep going or do you kind of get the idea and, and we can just, you know, go ahead and close the camera down so I can re really actually finish the job? That's what I need to know. So. Give me some answers here while I'm bolting this back on. And if you think you've learned from this video and we really don't need to go any further, then, um, okay, one guy here, I don't, I can't, was well, James Mitchell, he says keep going. Um, so, I mean, if you actually learned from it, you know, you know the process and we don't really need to go any further, uh, let me know so I can actually turn the camera off and I can, uh, you know, Cuss and holler to myself instead of cuss and holler at you. Okay, looky here. I'm lining it up just like I want it. I'm gonna tie it. Okay, I got another guy that says keep going. Okay, let's keep going. Let's do that. Let's go the marathon route. Let's see how long we can keep going until my friend Pete says fuck it. Okay, I just tightened that up. Looks beautiful. I'm gonna show you that when we're done. I'm gonna get this where I want it. That looks nice, but I can also feel right here, I can feel that low spot. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the Jerry Lewis marathon on this bitch. If we were only getting donations like Jerry Lewis did, we'd be in heaven. So, there you go. What are we gonna do next, people? What are we gonna do? We're gonna to go to the Bondo table. We're gonna go ahead and mix some more up. We're not gonna mix as much up. We don't wanna waste it. And we're gonna go ahead and put it on here. We're gonna switch over to this other one. Did you see how I'm doing this? Do you see what's going on here? Did, did you catch the lesson I'm teaching you? I'm gonna tell you the lesson, okay? I already did this one. While that was drying, I worked on that. Now I'm gonna do this, and while this is drying, I'm gonna work on that. That way I'm staying busy sitting here twiddling my thumbs or watching TikTok or Facebooking or T, you know, okay? I'm getting shit done. That's another fuck off lesson right there. If you're a hacker like me, of course, if you're a hack. Let me get this fucking knee up off the ground so we can get over there. All right. So the Bondo spreader that I had, I think it's been used and abused enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in here and I'll grab another Bondo spreader. All right, so now we got a brand new Bondo spreader. Let's go ahead and get our Bondo pallet. Now I wanna let everybody know, don't use cardboard. Do not use cardboard. All right, cardboard is a no-no according to, you know, all the professionals out there. Don't use cardboard for a, uh, a Bondo pallet because that's the hack way of doing it. That's the hack way. We definitely don't want to do it the hack job way. There it is, bam, went in the trash. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat our process. Somebody did say repeat, you were right, good answer. Now we don't need as much, okay? We don't need as much, so I'm just gonna get a little bit. 
maybe a little more than that. I think I need to change my Bondo uh, palette out. That, that's starting to look pretty old too. And then we're gonna take our plastic honey and we only wanna put a little bit in it. That's just a little bit of Bondo, so we just want a little bit of honey. Then we're gonna mix our hardener like this. And then we're gonna head back over to, you got it, the car. Okay, let me squeeze by you here. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get in your way. Thank you. You know, always try to be polite, even if you're a hack. You always should be polite. I think I'm gonna change the name of this channel to DIY Hack, hack School. How many people agree? Should I do that? DIY Hack School. Because I'm old. I should be retiring by now. I should be, I should be sitting around lounging, watching TV all day. Yeah, that's what I should be doing. Let me explain something to everybody out there. My friend Pete will probably never retire. Okay? I will probably work till the day I die. I am not a retired type person. Okay, look what I got. I got it mixed up. Now, I did put a little less honey in it because it was a little bit runny over there. But we still got a nice mixture if you look. Okay? So, it's not as runny and smooth but it's almost there and then we're going to go ahead and i don't know if you can see that gap there but we're going to go to the end because i want you to see this it's a beautiful situation being a hack that it is so i'm just going to fill this area right here see i don't need to fill the whole thing up does that make sense i only need to do this area right here and since that was so big i'm going to feather it way out here like this but this is the only area that we needed filled up. Uh, there was a little bit up on top. I'm gonna go ahead and get that. Once again, I'm using my Bondo as a guide coat. Remember that. Dark is low, white is high. It's either high or right. White is right, dark is low. So I'm thinking this will probably be the final coat that we will have to apply to this. Some of these are actually hard to do, and I'm going to tell you why. Because this, and, and here's a good example. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this while I'm at it. There's a dent right here. But here's a good example is this fender extension, it doesn't go straight out. What it does, it goes like this and then curves. So actually doing these is a little bit of a job. Um, but, you know, it can be done very nicely and quickly if you follow the hack man's way of doing it. I gotta get by you there. Sorry, sorry about that, guys. Sorry, didn't mean to bump into you. I wanna get this corner right here. That corner got dented, so we wanna get that filled. Okay, while that's drying, you know what we're gonna do, don't you? We're gonna go over here to this other one and see what we can do with that idea. So this is the one we started out on. Does everybody remember that? And I went ahead and put it on super thick on here. Um, let me go ahead and take this off. We're really, really getting into this video very long and it's starting to get kind of old. And I know that 99% of the people aren't gonna watch it all the way to the end. They're gonna get bored. So let me go ahead and take it off so we can move down the line. Because the main one we're concerned about is the one over there. That's going to be the finished one that you're going to see. But uh, So I hope everybody out there is having a beautiful day today. Um, like I said, I've been up since 1230 last night. Been awake all night thinking about these bullshit trees that I purchased. Wishing that I probably would, shouldn't have or wouldn't have. <clears throat> but it's too late now, so. 
There's nothing we can do. Nothing. But take our, what? What is that called? A dead blow. Look at that, people. Look at that. Look how beautiful that came off. Did you see it? Did you see that? Okay. I want to get this done, guys. I had a couple people that wanted me to go all the way through with it, so I'm going to do it. I just want to get it done. I got other things to do. I didn't realize I was going to be on here this long. Matter of fact, my phone might die out before we're even done. I don't know. So I'm taking it off. Look at how that protects that. Do you see that? Now I did get a little bondo here, but that's okay. Our job was right. We did the right job by taping it off. Very important. And then, what are we gonna do? We're gonna bring the camera up because we got to bolt it back on. There you go, looky there. Look at that. And I think on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the hack file. I'm gonna go ahead and use the hack file on the whole job, just so we can move down the line here. We're actually just killing time on this side because we're going to be finishing up on that one there. We're waiting for that bondo to dry so I can show you the finished product and I can move down the line. So I got this lined up where I want it. I'm going to tighten it up using my hack driver. You know, I've actually had people say, oh, look how old school this guy is. He uses air tools still. <laughs> Look, he doesn't even have any electric electric tools. Everything he uses is air tools. Yeah, okay, sure thing, buddy, sure thing. Now, another tool that you can use is this tool right here. Where did that go? Here it is. Um, when you got a big situation like this and there's a lot of buildup, um, when it starts looking like a Bondo buggy, because that's what most people are gonna say, um, you can actually use a DA sander with 36 grit. Now, we're not gonna sand this all the way down. The only thing we're gonna do with this is we're just gonna break it down. Then we'll come back and final finesse it. So let's get that right here like this. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our DA sander. See that? Did you see the hack job that I just did using this air tool? Unbelievable, people. Unbelievable. Let me get that camera over here. I want you to watch this. I, I mean, you know, we can't miss any hack action going on over here. We gotta watch it all. Let me go ahead and put it right there. Now I want you to watch this hack action as I use the hack sander. Hack sander too. Now watch close. Now watch close. Did you see that? Did you see how I hacked it together using a fucking air tool? Wow! Ain't that the shit? I got my hand sander here, people. It's not millennial, but it's a hand sander. I think I'm gonna change the name of this video. Uh, how to hack your way through restoring it. How to hack job a car. No, wow. Uh, how to how to uh, how to make a bondo buggy hack job on a muscle car. Yeah, we're going to change the title on this. It's got to have hack in there somewhere. Got to have hack job. Because I'm hacking it. 
Look what I got, guys. Look there. You see that? That's what we're using now. Let's go back over here. Come on. There you go. Looky there. Can you see that? So now we're going to take this sander. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get some brand new sandpaper. I don't want to use the old stuff. I'm going to go ahead and get brand new sandpaper. Yeah, we're going to change the title on this video to, we're going to have it say something about hack job. It's got to say hack. I got to have hack job in there. Old school hack job. Okay, so I'm taking my hand sander now. Remember, I used the DA on this, okay? Air tool DA sander. Do they even make an electric DA sander? If you know about that, let me know. I want to, I want to check that out. Actually, look at that. Um, that's actually at the finish stage. Hell, I think this is going to be the finish side, not that side. This side here is actually turning out really, really nice. Look at that. Wow. That's pretty amazing. It's amazing that an old hack job guy like me can actually do something this nice. If you really want to know the answer, it really, really is. That's right, I used it. I did. I'm just final finessing it up. Look at that, people. Look at there. One time, bam. Watch what I do. Watch this. Watch this. Here we go. I'm going to show you a secret. I'm going to show you something that you've never seen before in your life. Let me get it unbolted. Hang on. Hang on. Just... Hang tight, people. We're almost done here. This is going to be our finish side. So we'll be able to actually uh, quit a little early on this video action. But uh, what this is, this is our infamous Rustang, uh, the Mustang from hell. The Mustang that sat out in my shop in Dallas for three or four years, five years, that I hauled all the way from Dallas to Moab. Um, to finish for the guy. Okay, now that we know that, um, look at there, guys. That's really nice, but you know what? We're not done with it yet. I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Oh, hang tight. I got my cardboard. Remember, remember. If you use cardboard, your middle name's Hack. Remember that, people. Can't use cardboard. I'm a, I am a, uh, what can I say, an authentic proof that you can't use it. I'm authentic proof that you should not use cardboard to mix your bondo on. Remember that. I showed you not to use it. That what happens when you use it, you know, it's a hack job. Um, speaking of hack, this is a piece of flat steel. Um, let me go ahead and show you what I use that on. Just real quick. I, I know it's getting boring. But if we look down here, this is our corner that was totally fucked up. This is where I got T-boned real bad. And I had to replace part of this rocker down here. So he's putting the rocker molding on it. So to get all that lined up, of course, I had to build this up with, a, with some Bondo to feather it on, kind of like what I'm doing over here. This is body panel alignment. This is what you do. But what I did with this, when I did my final uh, sweep 
to make it the final Bondo sweep, I took this and used it as a Bondo spreader. And I went like this, I put the bond on there, I went like this, and it smoothed it out. That gives me less sanding that I have to worry about, and, and it gives me a situation where it's not going to be ripply and, and warpage, like everybody says it's going to be, because I used a fucking air file on it. Right there, air file action. Just call me hack, people. That's all you got to do. All you got to do from this day out. My hack, Pete. Okay, we're not using Bondo. Did I just get some? No, we're not doing that. What we are going to do is we're going to use some glaze. We're going to use some glaze putty. This is our final finish situation on this. This is glaze. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to take this, and what this will do, this will be our final sweep of this action. This is going to be it. Okay, let me get a little bit more because I want to feather that out properly. That has to be feathered out just a little bit. There we go. Come on. It's cold out. It's cold. It's only like 40 degrees outside. Now with the glaze, we don't need to use any of this. We just go straight into glaze. And then, of course, we got to have our hardener. We'll go ahead and mix it up. I only use glaze on final, on the final coat, you might say, the final sweep of Bondo. I only use glaze for that. Um, a lot of people are going to call me a hack or old school because I call body filler. Okay, look. Lightweight filler, I call it Bondo. If you call it Bondo, you're wrong. It's, it's not Bondo, people. It's body filler. It's filler, not Bondo. Don't call it Bondo. That's wrong. Don't do that. Don't say Bondo. Okay. All right, so for the final coat on this, Gonna get all the dust off, and then we're just going to fill in all the 36 grit scratches. That's all we're gonna do. Look at that. That's it. We're gonna fill in all the 36 grit scratches, just like that. And then we're gonna feather that out. We're gonna bring it way out there. Bring it way out there. And then without moving the camera, I'm gonna do the top the same way. I'm gonna feather it out. Now you're probably saying, well, why doesn't he have the tail light extension on there, the, the quarter panel extension? The reason I don't have the quarter panel extension on there is remember that little lip I showed you right here? That little ripply lip? That is my guide to when to stop sanding. That's my guide, all right? So I don't need that on there. But what I do need is to make sure that this is feathered out far enough so when I sand it, it all flows together and looks beautiful. Just like that. Look at that. You see that? Bam. Bam. We'll come up here. Go like that. Okay, so. Now we're gonna let that dry. And it should be dry enough in about, I don't know, whenever. So what are we going to do while we're waiting on that to dry, people? What are we going to do? I see the number of people that are watching are going down. They're going down, so that means I'm getting bored. I'm getting boring. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to say goodbye, all right? That was right. That's right, James. We're going to go to the other side. Uh... Since you said that, James, and you are paying attention, it looks like you've been here through the whole video. Just for you, I'm going to go over there, and we're going to keep all going. Because hack my friend Pete Hack ain't a fucking hack. I'm a nice fucking guy, okay? That's what I am. I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. Um, so here we are back on the other side. 
Uh, we're doing this for a guy named James out there that uh, has been following from the very beginning. And, you know, when I get somebody that all takes is one person that's really interested, I got to keep going. I got to keep going, guys. Because I just don't want to let that guy down, named James. We're going to go ahead, before I take that off, remember there was a little ding right here? Since this is bolted on here, um, to save me time and energy, I'm going to go ahead and get my hand sander. Now, we don't want to use air tools on this. We're going to use... And this is a used piece of 36 grit. I'm going to go ahead while this is bolted on it because I don't want to hold it in my lap sanding it because it's not going to come out. So I'm going to do it with this. And we're just going to get that blocked down. Now, one other thing I want to mention. Normally, when I'm doing this, listening to my radio, um, normally what I do is I'm wearing a dust mask. Okay? The only reason I'm not wearing a dust mask now is because I'm teaching you and talking, but 99.999% of the time, I have dust masks on all the time. I'm very, very safety cautious, and I want to live a little bit longer than most hat job body men do. Because, you know, a hat job, the hat guy doesn't wear masks. He doesn't wear safety glasses. He doesn't wear gloves. He doesn't do nothing because he's a hacker. I'm not that fucking guy. Now, did you see what I did? Did you see that? I'm sorry, I got an implant right here. I'm getting ready to get a, uh, 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 I got to pay for the implant and then I'm getting a crown, so. Anyway, did you see what I did? I didn't sand it like this, okay? What I did is I took my center, I went into it this way, because that's a sharp edge. And I feathered it out because I'm watching it. And then what I did is I'm coming over here and I'm sanding this sharp corner. And I'm feathering it out as I'm doing it. You see that right there? And now our dent is done. Bam, bitch. Hacked away for life. That was our uh, polyester putty going. Our polyester putty over there is starting to dry pretty good, so let's continue to work on this. Um, we've went this far. I might as well show you what it looks like on the finished product so you can get a beautiful angle of it, of what it's like hacking something. Um, there's a paint company out there called What's the name of that fucking company called Tamco? Tamco Paint Paint Supplies. They they're trying to be the next and best house of color type paint. Well, I made a video one time, and I accidentally used their name in the video that it was trash paint. And I was actually I actually meant Trimco. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that Trimco, but I actually is Tamco. And let me tell you what. I got shit on me so hard that it looked like a fucking snow blizzard of shit by using the word Tamco. People were calling me scumbags, hacks, old school, old piece of shit, and just on and on. And I even said, I even went on there and apologized. I didn't mean it was Tamco, it was Tremco. But uh, after I was treated that way, and this is not just by people that use it. This is actually literally by the company that sells the shit. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let me tell you what. Uh, let me tell you my feelings about it. And I'm telling you this for a reason. Fuck Tamco. Okay. If you use Tamco, go tell the bitch fuck off. Okay. I don't give a shit. Um, the way that I was treated over that little action was uh, pathetically uncalled for, all because I accidentally said Tamco instead of Trimco. So, and I, and then after I apologize, so, you know, Mr. Hack Guy does make mistakes, okay? Even though I'm a hacker, I do make mistakes, people, 
All right? So I'm going to tap this very lightly, and looky there, it comes off just like we want it. Um, we will remove the tape again. That is part of the process. You can't keep the tape on there. You've got to remove it. And then I think after this situation here, um, you can see right here, look at, look at the edge we got. Okay, let me show you that real quick. I want to go ahead and show you that edge. All right, so here's our edge. So you can see that we still got it built up and it looks like it's gonna be, when you got an edge like this on there, you know that you're flush mounted. You know that's a flush mount situation. So like I said, sometimes you have to do it more than once. Um, what I'm gonna do to speed things along is I, the hat that I am, hello, is going to use the DA sander. Now remember, I have 36 grit on this, and the only thing I'm gonna do with that is break it down. And another thing, this is a very used piece of 36 grit. Okay, this is not brand new. So when you do this, being the hacker that you might be, always remember, when you're working on something like this, use a used piece of 36 grit, not new, when it comes to the hack sander. <laughs> the glaze off of it so when I use my hand sander it'll work a lot better um, while we got this off I'm gonna go ahead and clean this groove up and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this And I am going to put it back on. I'm just cleaning it up is all I'm doing, people. That's it. I want to get this corner right here. You see that? And we'll take this and we'll get this here. Okay, now we'll go ahead and... We're not going to bolt it on. We're just going to set it on there uh, just to be real quick about it now. And I can see that that actually looks really nice. But you know what? I better go ahead and bolt it just to make ensure myself because um, I really got to get to work, people. But I did promise that I'd go ahead and at least finish it out to one end. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I hate to disappoint everybody, but when I'm making these videos, I'm not making any money. So if you can please give me a thumbs up, um, subscribe to my channel would be awesome. And watch the videos. That's all I ask from people. That's all I ask. Watch my videos and subscribe. And sometimes getting these back into the right position is kind of a bitch, but it, it'll eventually get there. So we got a little bit of a high spot. I can feel it when I rub my finger. So it's a good idea that I'm bolting it back on. Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty high right there. But then on the other hand, it's a little bit low right here. What happened? What did we do wrong, guys? It's not on there right, that's wrong. 
not lined up like it's supposed to be. There it is. Okay, now, now we're lined up right there. That's it right there. Okay. Like I said, sometimes these are very hard to continually line them up where you want them, but you've got to do what you've got to do. Hear from Nitpick Norm lately? No, I haven't. I don't care about hearing from him. Um, I didn't realize, let me go ahead and tell you about this. Um, I didn't realize that when Minnie dropped off the Mercedes Benz, um, she came around, but she was filming. She was in a very happy mood. She was filming the shop in Dallas. And when she dropped off the Mercedes Benz, she was coming around the corner and our, our good buddy, Mr. Majestic, Mr. Piece of Shit that he is, um, started harassing Minnie about uh, this, that. Oh, what's this right here? Oh, look at that. Why is the car dirty? Uh, I just traveled fucking 1,500 miles. I'm not gonna go to the car wash and wash it. So anyway, he intimidated her and Rat Fink Norm decided to weasel his way out of the crowd and skim his way around the corner like a slivering snake um, while Les was actually cussing Minnie out. So no, I haven't talked to Norm and fuck him and everything else. All right, fuck off. That's what I say about Norm. All right, back to the situation. We got a nice edge here, but look what happened. I fucked up. I fucked up by using my DA sander, people. Do you see that? I got to add more Bondo. There's no way out of it. So that's a hard lesson to learn. And why is that a hard lesson to learn? Because I'm the one learning from my fuck off mistake. I'm the one that's got to fix the situation. By using my DA sander, I forgot this was the only place I had to sand. So I sanded too much up here and I took too much off down here. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that as is. I will fix that off camera and get it squared up. Let's go back over to the other one. It should be ready to sand and we'll see what the finished product looks like when you're all done being a hack right here and actually get it done the proper way. Obviously not the way I'm showing you, obviously. So here we are now. Yeah, that's right. We don't want to use any air tools on that now. We're pretty much done with air tools. Do not get an air tool out. Let me get some more sandpaper. Um, let me do that. And then I'm also going to get this. I'll show you what that is in a minute. That's a box of hackery is what that is. A box of hackery. Has anybody ever heard of that before? A box of hackery. I wish you last year for me. Okay, I, don't, I couldn't read that, I'm sorry guys. I can't read the comments. Um, okay, so here we go. 36 grit, all I'm doing is breaking the blaze off. That's it. That's all I'm doing. I want to clean this edge right here very lightly. That's all I want to do. Okay. I want to take this sander here. I'm going to get right here. I'm not going to move the camera for this. I'm going to I'm going to sand it only to remove the glaze. What the glaze is, it's the shiny stuff. See how that all looks white or almost white? I took the glaze off so it's gonna be easier to sand for the finish. All I'm doing is taking the glaze off of this. Now that that's done, get that right there. 
now that that's done, and we went ahead and cleaned the edges up, we're going to go ahead and put our tail piece back on. And once again, I wear dust masks, people. I'm only doing this without a dust mask so I can teach you how to do this. That's it. Believe me, I wish I had my fucking dust mask on right now. So I'm going to bolt this on here. And before I bolt it on, before I bolt that on there, um, I'm looking at the gap. I'm looking at the gap between the two pieces and I notice it's a little bit tight. Remember I told you about that rubber gasket that goes on here? <clears throat> so before I bolt it on there for the final fitment, I'm going to take my block sander one more time and I'm going to There we go. There, that's better. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. And these are actually really nice quarter panels. These are the nicest corner panels that I have ever installed. They're from a company called GT Mustang. Don't know if you ever heard of that. Um, check them out. Um, I'll leave a in the description of the video, I'll leave a phone number to my buddy Ralph that actually sells GT Mustang parts. Um, I'm sorry, it's called, it's not GT Mustang, it's called Muscle Car GT. Scrap the word GT Mustang, it's called Muscle Car GT. That's the name of the company. Um, I will leave a link in the description if you are working on an old vintage classic car such as this, an old muscle car, and you need parts that fit super, super good, I'm going to leave Ralph's phone number in the description so you can contact him and tell him my friend Pete sent you, and he might give you a small discount. Maybe. If you're lucky. But he ships all over... He ships all over the United States, so he's a good guy to know. Okay, there we go. Hold on. We're almost done with this, people. How long did this take? A fucking hour? Maybe longer? Okay, look at that. So, looky here what I got. Hold on, let me get it. I don't have it yet. What I have is an old school hack sander. This is an old school uh, block sander. I'm sorry, did I say hack sander? I meant block sander. And another thing I got that was in the box is our 80 grit. All right, remember I told you I was just going to block sand it. Um, I was just block sanding it down to get the glaze off. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a nice hard block sander. This is probably from the 60s, I would say. So it might be a hack sander. It might be. If we do our research, it might come up as hack. And then with the tail light extension, I mean, I'm sorry, the, you can call it a tail light extension. Extension with the quarter panel extension out. We're going to go ahead and finish sand this. Look at that, people. Look at that. That's done. That's a done deal. Perfect. But we're not done yet. You know why, right? Because I got to get my dowel. Got to get that out. I took the 36 grit off. And I'm going to go ahead and put 80 grit on. I'm going to put some 80 grit on it, just like this. 
And we'll go ahead and move the camera now. Right there, since we're going to be done here in a few seconds. And now, I'm going to go ahead and sand the top. Being sure not to roll over the edge here. We don't want to roll that edge. Um, there was a little imperfection right here, so we don't want to fuck that up. And that is perfect. Now, this is another important situation that you're not thinking of, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you. On this corner right here, I had to add some. All right? I had to add some because this corner was higher. We don't want to leave it sharp like that. We want to manipulate it to be just like the rest of the quarter panel. All right? The quarter panel, it's an edge, but it's, it's a rounded edge. It's not a sharp edge. So we're going to take our, hold on, I don't want that block. Where's that? There it is. So we're going to take our 80 grit, and we are going to sand this down, just like that. Then I'm going to come over here, I'm going to sand this. I want to get that corner nice. And then, without further ado, I'm going to take this piece of 80 grit that I found laying on the floor, and I am just going to manipulate my way into, there you go, look at that, perfect, just like that. Then, while I got this in my hand, we'll go ahead and clean up all our areas, like right here. My head in the way, sorry. And look what I found. I found some hack paper. Went ahead and found a little bit of hack paper on the floor. I'm gonna go ahead and sand that. Let me get that camera down there. What I'm doing, I'm cleaning this edge right here. So I got some 36 grit hack paper. Because I've actually had people out there that said, I haven't used sand, I haven't used 36 grit in over 15 years. Gosh, what a hacker. I've actually had people leave comments. I, I haven't used 36 grit in over 10 years. Is that fucking stupid or what? Why would you even leave a comment like that? Because maybe you're jealous? Who gives a fuck? I mean, if you're so perfect, open your own fucking YouTube channel and show everybody how to do it the right way. That's what I'm saying. And obviously, I'm not doing it right. I'm doing it the wrong way. That's what I'm doing. One thing that I do want to tell you, um, and I forgot all about this, and this is really, really important, is this is epoxy primer, okay? And I, I forgot all about this. You do not want to, this is my opinion, being the hacker that I am. And I've done this forever since I started doing body work when I was like 14 or 15. I never put Bondo or body filler on epoxy primer. I always put it on bare metal. Now there's gonna be people that argue with me and there's gonna be people that say, you're full of shit. But I'm going to tell you right now, I've never had any issues of anything, and I never put it. So what I did is I took a sander and I sanded this down before I applied it. I don't know if you noticed that at the beginning, that this was bare metal here, but it was. Okay? So that's very important. And what we're doing is looking at this, and we're saying, my friend Pete the Hack is done. It's been 99 minutes and 38 seconds. Let's get a quick look at this. And I got to say goodbye, hasta la vista. Thank you for joining in. It's been a very long Monday morning. I've got a lot of fucking work to do. My goal 
on this week is to get this car in paint primer, final primer job, and paint the dash. We have been on here for a hundred minutes, people. I've got to go. I've got to go. The hack job is over. The hack show is done. And you learned something and how to do it like a hack. Look how nice that looks. That came out beautiful. The owner's going to be happy with that. And we will fix that thing up. And you will never know what hit you in the face except a piece of hack paper. Hack paper. Right here at the hack shop called DIY Auto School. Do it the hack way or fuck off and don't do it at all, bitch. See you later. There you go.